What's up everyone? Welcome to Mestizo. I'm Diana. Or, if you can pronounce it correctly, I'm Diana. Today we're going to be talking about piñatas. The candy filled tradition that keeps on giving is most associated with Mexico. But, as we've seen multiple times on this channel before, the piñata has deep historical roots stretching back to the old world. Early European versions of the piñata were then brought to the new world as a way to convert indigenous populations to the Catholic religion. And today, while a piñata's religious significance has been mostly lost, the ceremony surrounding it calls back to its religious origins. Join us as we break open the history of piñatas and we sample some tasty and a few of the less than savory historical treats of la piñata. A piñata is a container with a pottery or paper mache core. This container is then colorfully decorated and filled with candy and other treats. The piñata is then hung on a rope and broken, usually by blindfolded children with a stick. I say usually because if you're impatient like me, you push the little niños out of the way to get your candy. Yeah, that's right, little Josecito. It's my candy now. Your little arm's gonna break it. To the horror of Ayn Rand fans everywhere, the smaller children, that is, the weaker ones, usually go first as they're least likely to break the piñata. See what I mean? Weak. When the older children get their turn, they get blindfolded and spun around. The person controlling the piñata, usually dad or some other child sadist, moves the piñata around to make it harder to hit. And if you have family members like mine, you usually do the opposite of whatever they're telling you to do. Why y'all gotta be like that? No quieren de dulce o qué? Each person's turn is limited, usually marked by the singing of a traditional song. The piñata is most associated with Mexico, but like other mestizo traditions, it's now popular in various parts of the world, including in the U.S., where the invasion continues. Although there's some debate, the piñata's origin is most likely Chinese. This early Chinese version was typically in the shape of a cow or ox and used for the new year. It was decorated with symbols and colors meant to produce a favorable climate for the upcoming year's farming season. It was also filled with different types of seeds and hit with colorful sticks. After it was broken, the remains were burned and the ashes were kept for good luck. In the early 14th century, coming back from his travels in China, Marco Polo brought this tradition to Italy where it was adapted for the festivities of Lent. There it was called piñata, meaning cooking pot. This early European version of the piñata then arrived in Spain. Like the Italians, the Spanish initially used a plain clay container called la olla before decorating it with ribbons and other colored paper. In Spain, the first Sunday of Lent became a celebration known as Domingo de Piñata, or Piñata Sunday. After the conquest of the Aztec Empire in 1521, the Spanish spread the piñata along with other fun things like monks and nuns to modern-day Mexico in the 16th century. They're a fun bunch. Why are all the Conjuring movies about female demons or evil women? What's going on there, Conjuring universe? What are you trying to say? A similar pot-beating tradition, however, already existed in central Mexico when the Spanish arrived. The Aztecs, or Mexica, celebrated the birth of their god of the sun in war, Huitzilopochtli, in mid-December. During the celebration called Panquetzalitzli, aside from the obvious human sacrifice, a clay pot would also be decorated with colorful feathers and put on a pole. This pot was then broken with a stick and the treasures inside would fall as an offering to Huitzilopochtli. According to local records, the piñata tradition began in the town of Acolman, just north of Mexico City, where piñatas were introduced by Spanish monks for catechism purposes and to replace the pagan Panquetzalitzli. The Augustinian monks at the convent of Alcoman created Las Posadas in the lead up to Christmas with their modified piñatas at the center of the ceremony. Although the church of Alcoman was built by indigenous people, they weren't even allowed inside the church when it first opened. And the cherry on top of this mass of this Sunday is that the monk would not even face his indigenous congregation and instead would face the altar on the church's balcony. During a posada, a piñata is broken as part of the ceremonies. Traditionally, a star-shaped piñata has seven points, 
representing the seven deadly sins, while the pot in the middle represents evil or Satan. The person with the stick is blindfolded to represent blind faith, and the turning, singing, and shouting represent the disorientation that temptation creates. The person can be turned up to 33 times, once for each year of Jesus' life. Mm, that's a lot. It's like a drunk child. As the person beats the piñata, this represents a struggle against temptation and evil. And as they look towards the sky or heaven, they pray for their sweet reward. And when the piñata finally breaks, good has overcome evil, and the sweets become the reward for keeping the faith. Everyone then shares in the divine gifts bestowed at their feet from having destroyed evil. Jeez, those Augustinian monks were really creative. While La Piñata's religious significance has mostly been lost, the ceremony surrounding it remains mostly intact. of making piñatas falls under the craft of cartoneria, which refers to items made from paper and cardboard. Check out our Alebrije video if you'd like to learn more about cartoneria. Although piñatas are traditionally made with a clay pot core, they can also be made with a paper core. Paper core piñatas have grown in popularity since broken pot pieces can be dangerous to children. That pot breaking over your head really hurts too. That happened to me as a kid. Thankfully, there was no long-term damage. That pot breaking over your head really hurts too. That happened to me as a kid. Thankfully, there was no long-term damage. Piñatas come in all shapes and sizes, and today they can be fashioned into cartoon characters. For Christmas, however, the traditional star shape is a must, as it's associated with the Star of Bethlehem and is a symbolic guiding light towards salvation. Traditionally in Mexico, piñatas are filled with oranges, peanuts, jicama, sugarcane, and, of course, candy. One developing niche market for piñatas are adult-themed piñatas. These include political figures like a certain orange tan man and other politicians who are not particularly well-liked. Another type of adult piñatas are sexually themed ones, usually in the form of exotic dancers. These piñatas can be filled with adult treats, like alcohol in addition to candy because even adults still love their candy. In the city of Tepatitlan, the world's largest traditional seven-pointed piñata was created in 2010. Over 35 feet wide, it was made out of fiberglass and weighed close to 800 pounds. Carnival Cruises and M&Ms also made their own giant piñatas for promotional purposes in 2008 and 2011, respectively. Proving that anything can be commercialized and used for marketing if you just believe Piñatas are one of the earliest mestizo traditions and crafts to emerge after the Spanish arrived to the new continent. Augustinian monks successfully modified their European piñata tradition in order to replace the Mesoamerican Huitzilopochtli celebration. And so treats given to a god as an offering morphed into treats from god as a reward for keeping the faith. Who would have known that such a fun and at times slightly dangerous tradition had such deep roots in both Spanish and indigenous traditions. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.